Welcome to today's webcast presentation, The Engineering Behind Fabric Buildings. My name is Bob Drake, editor of Civil and Structural Engineer Magazine, published by Zweig Group. Thank you for joining this webcast, which is sponsored by Legacy Building Solutions. Before we begin today's presentation, first some general information about the webcast and the GoToWebcast platform. The views of the speakers and organizations participating in this webcast are their own and do not necessarily reflect those of Civil and Structural Engineer or its publisher, WAG Group. If you have any technical difficulties while viewing this webcast, please submit questions or a brief explanation of your technical problem using the Ask a Question box on the left side of the webcast dashboard, and a representative will assist you. Note the button in the upper right corner to enlarge the screen of the slide viewing window if desired. During the webcast, you also can submit questions to our speakers using the same Ask a Question box. Submit your questions at any time, and we will try to answer as many as we can later in the webcast. Zweig Group encourages group learning for our events. If you are viewing the live webcast with a group on one registered person's computer, that person must complete and submit the multiple viewer registration form for the group in order for everyone to earn credit. Download the multiple viewer registration form from the event resources on the left side of the webcast dashboard. Submission instructions are on the form. Also note a link in the event resources section to download a PDF of the slides in today's webcast. Details on downloading a certificate of completion will be provided later in the webcast. Viewers of archived webcast must pass a quiz in order to download a certificate of completion. Additionally, at the end of today's event, we will provide a webcast evaluation survey for you to submit your feedback. Presenting today are Nathan Stobie, Dwayne Munch, Sarah Davis, Arnell Obrez, and Terry Smith. Nathan Stobie is General Manager of Legacy Building Solutions. He has more than 15 years of experience in the fabric structure industry and has made significant contributions, including as a member of the original committee for developing CSA S367, the Guideline for Pre-Engineered Membrane Structures, and is co-founder of the Membrane Structures Manufacturers Association. He also holds several patents for fabric structure construction. As general manager, Nathan leads Legacy's growth through innovation and vision. Sarah Davis is building and project design consultant at Legacy. She has more than 15 years of experience in sales and business development in her role, she focuses on the automotive and aviation industries, as well as riding arenas and agricultural buildings. Sarah's specialty is helping customers find the right solution for their unique needs. Dwayne Munch is the Senior Structural Engineer for Legacy Building Solutions. Licensed in, six, in 26 states and five provinces, Dwayne oversees the engineering department where he is vested with the responsibility of providing engineering analysis, technical expertise, detailing, customization, and retrofitting of fabric membrane structures. Terry Smith is President and CEO of TWS Engineering Limited. For more than 40 years, TWS Engineering has developed and maintained a reputation for excellence in client services through the delivery of cost-effective, cutting-edge, and efficient engineering solutions. Terry has grown TWS Engineering to include a full complement of in-house engineering services, including structural, civil, mechanical, and electrical. Terry is committed to providing his clients proficient design in a timely manner. His knowledge and experience have made TWS Engineering a leader in the consulting industry. Arnell Oberez is a dedicated structural engineer with more than 15 years of experience in civil structural consulting services. Arnell completed postgraduate degree programs in civil engineering and special courses on computer-aided analysis and design of building structures, structural dynamics, earthquake analysis and design, geotechnical engineering design, project management, and construction materials and methods. His engineering support for clients often includes exploring alternatives for cost consideration and conflict resolution that may arise involving structural scope during construction. Arnell's diversified project portfolio includes, but is not limited to, industrial and commercial projects, high-rise construction, residences, condos, cottages, electrical substations, recreational swimming pool projects, and water treatment plants. So let's get started. Nathan, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you. Today's webinar will compare fabric structures with pre-engineered metal buildings. 
you will learn the advantages of pre-engineered metal and fabric structures, how the two types of structures compare with each other, the benefits of fabric structures for a variety of applications, and some of the architectural features available for fabric structures on a rigid steel frame. Both types of buildings are constructed using a rigid steel frame. Rigid frame construction increases the structure's durability by enhancing how the frame carries vertical loads. The advantages of rigid frame construction include the ability to construct wide clear span areas, engineering that complies with building codes, increased ability to withstand snow and seismic loads, and cost effective and energy efficient construction. As we look closer at engineered metal buildings, it will become apparent that many of the features that made these buildings so popular are also traits for rigid frame fabric structures. Both use the same type of frame and both are fabricated at a manufacturing facility being and field assembled at the job site. However, the biggest difference is how the cladding and materials integrate with the frame. In, in metal buildings, the steel sheets are screwed to secondary members like purlins or girts which are then through bolted through the rigid frames, creating an exoskeleton, which structurally aids the frames. In a fabric structure, the fabric is attached to the frame via a Keter rail. Though the fabric is a redundant brace to the frames, outer flange, it is not included when designing the frame. Purlins are the only lateral support the rigid frame anticipates in the design process. Additionally, cables and steel rods are attached to the frame to transfer lo longitudinal wind forces through the roof and into the walls, eventually terminating to the foundation as seen in this picture. Before we continue, there are a few definitions we need to cover. There are a wide variety of fabric structures available on the market, including temporary tents used in weddings and events, small single tube arch buildings suitable for carports, and permanent structures that are fully engineered with a foundation and a truss or rigid steel frame. Today, we will be talking about fabric structures that are fully engineered and use a rigid steel frame for support, both because this is the type of building that's most comparable to an engineered metal building and because that's the type of building that we at Legacy are most familiar with. Before I go any further, I'm curious to know how many of you have specified a fabric building before. Please use the survey tool to let us know how fam familiar you are with this uh, type of building. While I wait for you to fill out your survey, I just wanted to remind everyone, as mentioned at the beginning, that at any point in time, you can submit questions that we will attempt to answer at the end of the uh, presentation. All right, thanks for filling that out. Uh, we're gonna keep moving on. Pre-engineered metal buildings are designed using an I-beam steel frame with sheet metal cladding. With these benefits, the pre-engineered metal buildings are becoming a common place and are used for everything from retail establishments to big box stores to hospitals and even churches. These buildings have use the uh, same proven engineering principles as conventional buildings and are designed to site-specific requirements. Engineered metal buildings are designed and fabricated at a manufacturing facility and then transported to the building site where they are field assembled. According to the Metal Building Manufacturers Association, pre-engineered metal buildings comprise nearly half of all one and two-story non-residential buildings in the United States. Designers and engineers customize these pre-engineered building, metal buildings to meet the owner's specifications. The buildings are customized to the necessary length and width with clear span interiors available to create more interior space. In addition to space requirements, customization options include uh, door and window placement, eave height, interior build-outs, ventilation, and heating, system, heating system, systems. Sorry. Alternative wall materials, loading docks, and many more. 
Customization options may prim be primarily practical or aesthetic. The ability to customize a building designed around business needs and preferences is one of the main reasons pre-engineered metal building and fabric buildings are so popular. Pre-engineered metal and fabric buildings are available as one and two story buildings. Balconies and mezzanines are another way to add more space inside. This is the same for both pre-engineered steel and rigid I-beam fabric buildings. The rigid frame also opens up the possibilities of overhangs, soffits, lean-tos, and other designs that are difficult and too expensive to do using mass-produced trusses. While fabric structures with a second story are less common, they are still available. An example of a two-story fabric structure is the office I'm in right now. Legacy's manufacturing facility in South Haven, Minnesota includes a two-story office building, a fabric manufacturing facility, a maintenance shop, and a steel manufacturing plant for a total of 70,000 square feet of operations. All four buildings are customized for purpose. The office complaint contains a complete second story as well as a third floor loft. There's a balcony looking out over the fabric manufacturing facility which is attached. Other prominent features of the buildings include steel cladding on the inside of the steel manufacturing facility, overhead bridge cranes affixed to the frames in the steel plant, canopies over all doors, overhangs, and multiple windows and doors throughout. Now I'll turn it over to Sarah. Thanks, Nathan. Another advantage of pre-engineered buildings is that the design and construction timelines are shorter. This means the building owner can realize a faster ROI by profiting from the building sooner and spending less on wages and allowances during construction. Engineered building companies save time because it is more efficient and cost effective to produce a building in a manufacturing setting and then erect it on site using bolted connections and field welds. Vertically integrated companies like Legacy are responsible for both the building manufacturing and installation. This means one calendar controls the design <clears throat> and construction process, with no time spent looking for an installer who is experienced with the building design and no days wasted while the project passes from one contractor to another. Actual construction time is shortened because the components are designed to fit together on the job site. <clears throat> The installation team is specifically trained to construct the building, and because they have one job on site, they are able to do it quickly, allowing other subcontractors to access the site sooner and finish systems like plumbing and lighting. And since most of the costs of construction, including wages and equipment rentals, increase the longer construction takes, shorter construction means immediate savings. Further time and cost savings are another advantage of fabric. Fabric panels are installed in about one-third the time of steel sheeting, allowing construction crews to get in and finish faster. This also reduces the cost of wages, equipment rentals, and living allowances during installation. This is a great example of fast in installation. This building is used to store frac sand, which is a very fast-moving industry. The main cavity of the building and three lean-tos add up to a total of 79,200 square feet, enough to store 45,000 U.S. tons of frac sand, as well as equipment maintenance and transloading areas. Harsh winters at the Alberta site meant the foundation was finished a month behind schedule, but the building was ready for occupancy on schedule, saving source energy services over a month of downtime at a critical facility. This building is highly customized for purpose, including one lean-to, insulated for winter use, and an industrial conveyor capable of receiving product via rail car. Product cladding, uh, fabric cladding allows the building owner to take advantage of natural sunlight, which lasts for up to 15 hours a day during the busiest fracking season. Building maintenance is a costly endeavor that is unfortunately necessary in many industries. Paint, shingles, and siding all require regular maintenance to stay in working order and keep a professional appearance. 
Engineered buildings with metal siding or fabric cladding avoid many of these requirements. Both pre-engineered and fabric buildings are built to last for 20 or more years. The engineering behind these structures makes them likely to withstand everyday use and common hazards, including snow load, strong winds, and seismic activity. Maintenance is one area where fabric structures trump steel. The steel sheets are inflexible and assembled with penetrations. Over time, this will cause leaks. Flexible fabric sheets are permanently welded together. Using Legacy's patented fabric attachment system, individual panels are sealed together with friction fit overlapping seals to ensure that there is no air or water movement. Each roof panel is welded together to create a waterproof sealed exterior membrane. The system also uses horizontal mechanical tension to stretch the fabric to the recommended level, keeping it taut and preventing any friction for the life of the building. This system provides regular support and tension for the fabric both vertically and horizontally, which is critical to ensure a wrinkle-free finish and a long fabric life. The advantage of a sealed fabric roof system is that the cover is completely waterproof. There are no tiny holes from bolts or screws like on a metal building roof, which can allow future drips and leaks inside. And because the panels are sealed together, there are not leaks at the panel breaks because of negative pressure inside the building at the Keter locations. In industrial applications, the give of fabric also provides some protection from co collision. When the fabric is damaged, it is easy to repair by the building owner or by trained crews. Heat welding will restore the fabric to nearly 100% of its original strength. Most repairs are completed quickly to minimize downtime and return to working order. Of course, all buildings are vulnerable to damage, whether from collision with heavy equipment or from a fire. Fabric structures using separate fabric panels ensures that in the likely event a section of the fabric is damaged, only the damaged areas need to be replaced. Additionally, as shown in the picture, a fabric building is self-venting. In the presence of heat or fire, the PVC will melt away from the flame rather than feeding the fire. Often, most of the damage from a fire is caused by excessive heat buildup within the building. In a fire event, the fabric melts away, allowing the heat to escape and drastically reduces the damage to the building. The ventilation also provides an escape route for smoke, which is one of the most deadly elements of a fire. The fire that occurred in the building shown above caused virtually no structural damage to the building, significantly reducing costs and downtime for its owner. Pre-engineered metal buildings do have some faults, and while they're widely used, they are not perfect for every application. These buildings are most cost-effective for clear span widths over about 80 feet. Because the frame type is identical, this is a shared weakness with rigid framed engineered fabric buildings. While it is possible to build smaller sizes, some owners may choose less expensive options like prefabricated kits for smaller buildings. Most of the disadvantages of pre-engineered metal buildings relate to the steel cladding itself. Steel blocks all natural light. While some of the light can be recovered through windows and openings, that is no match to the diffuse sunlight present in every corner of a fabric building. Humans have a natural attraction to sunlight, making the buildings more appealing to employees and customers, as well as animals and agricultural purposes. PVC fabric has up to 16% translucency, which on a sunny day will allow enough light into the building to safely work without the use of artificial lights. Many building owners will find that the savings on lights installed and powered will be a significant savings over the life of the building. Fabrics light transmittance varies based on the type of fabric chosen, but generally there is enough light inside the building for everyday activities without adding light. As it is a conductive material, steel transmit the outside conditions to the inside of the building. This places extra stress on the building's insulation and climate control system as they fight this conductivity to maintain a comfortable ambient temperature. Fabric has thermally non-conductive properties. 
While fabric isn't known for contributing any ins insulative R value to the building, the non-conductive properties of fabric help to maintain the interior temperature rather than magnifying the outside conditions. Insulation is installed between two layers of fabric, so it is not visible from anywhere in the building. In independent studies, insulated fabric, fabric buildings have been shown to be 20% more efficient to heat and cool as compared to similarly insulated metal buildings because of the non-conductive and airtight qualities of fabric. This case study features an insulated building that is climate controlled for year-round tennis play. The Oklahoma City Tennis Center at Will Rogers Park is one of the largest indoor tennis facilities in the region. It features R30 and R17 insulation plus a quiet climate control system. The white liner both protects the insulation and reflects the LED lighting to magnify the lighting available on each court. This building is designed for high occupancy and meets USTA standards for tennis events and tournaments. The Tennis Center was named Municipal Facility of the Year by Tennis Industry Magazine, as well as USTA Outstanding Large Facility. The metal panels in pre-engineered metal buildings are known to corrode in the presence of moisture and oxygen. Salt, fertilizer, and chemicals accelerate the rate of corrosion. Because it's impossible to prevent water, oxygen, and other corrosives from contacting the building, eventually, Corrosion will eat through the thin gauge metal panels. Once corrosion begins, it is nearly impossible to treat. In addition to being ugly, corrosion will eventually damage the structural integrity of the building, causing leaks and other damage. Fabric has properties that make it inert to corrosion and ideal for corrosive marine environments. This corrosion resistance also makes it a cost-effective choice for storing harsh materials, such as fertilizer, salt, or mining ores. In corrosive environments, fabric is proven and warranted to outlast many other building materials, especially metal. The ultimate in corrosion protection is when a fabric liner is installed in the building. Installing a fabric liner keeps the corrosive material, even fine dust, out of contact with the building frame. The steel is then protected from internal and external corrosives. Corrosion is a major concern for some industries. For example, salt mining. This building for Lion Salt in Kansas is specifically designed to resist corrosion caused by constant exposure to salt. The interior liner keeps the steel frame separated from the salt, while access panels allow workers to inspect the frame. The liner is clear to allow more light into the building, which, as you can see, is lit well enough for everyday use. Even with the liner, the frame is hot dip galvanized for more protection. Rather than steel cables, secondary support comes from solid bracing rods. Purlin caps stop salt from settling inside the ends of the purlins. Legacy crews installed this building to OSHA and MSHA safety standards. Leaks are another problem cause common to steel buildings. Leaks generally happen around fasteners and are caused by the gradual movement of steel sheets due to weather, and weather events and settling. These leaks can often be difficult to find and repair, causing frustration for the building owner, as well as damaging the interior and contents of the building. Air leaks through these same holes reduce the effectiveness of the insulation in the building. It doesn't take a large hole to create a leak, so finding the leak is very difficult. As mentioned earlier, fabric structures use welded sheets of fabric to create a continuous barrier between the interior and exterior of the building, with no way for leaks to start. And now, I'd like to introduce Arnell Ogres from TWS Engineering, who partnered with Legacy on an event center for the River Cree Resort and Casino near Edmonton, Alberta. Thanks, Sarah. It was in the spring and summer of 2015 that TWS Engineering worked with Legacy on the River Creek project, and more recently, TWS Engineering is working on the Fox Creek Recreation Center. It was my first time working on fabric building, and I was so impressed. Fabric can also make the interior of the building more comfortable, as fabric has thermally non-conductive properties, unlike steel, Fabric does not magnify the outside temperatures 
but maintaining a more consistent interior temperature. Metal cladding, on the other hand, will radiate the temperature variation, creating an interior that is colder in winter and hotter in summer. Public building has excellent air tightness, thermal bridging, acoustics, and HVAC penetrations. The flexible fabric minimizes air leakages, resulting in a building which is much more efficient to heat or cool. Whereas metal buildings are constantly contending with air leakages through screw holes and seams, which is often the number one contributor to heat loss within a building. Some of the notable features of public buildings are the tight seals around fenestrations and the thermal bridging of the building, which is effectively increase the building's overall R value. Acoustics are another area where we notice a difference between fabric and conventional materials. Rather than reverberating background noises, the fabric dampen them and minimize the distracting sounds. This is obviously very important in concert venues. We also noted that noises created by mechanical systems mounted on or beside the fabric building are suppressed by the building material, providing high-quality acoustic attenuation in the event space. That's all for now, and thank you for having me. I'll stick around for the Q&A if you have any questions. Thank you, Arnel. While all engineered buildings are generally designed as permanent, there are occasions when a building needs to be relo relocated, often when a lease ends or when business needs change. Relocating a steel building is difficult and expensive, as typically new metal panels are required in order to be able to reassemble. Relocating a fabric building is a different story. The fabric panels are slid out of the Keter track, the fabric is rolled and shipped, and then the fabric is reapplied to the building frame without fasteners or leaks. And now Duane will share some additional considerations for fa fabric buildings. Thanks, Sarah. So what are the disadvantages of fabric structures? Well, they are not available with a flat roof profile. Fabric buildings require a roof slope to allow snow and other precipitation to run off the roof. Fabric is strong and extremely durable. However, the flexible nature of the fabric means you still want the water to drain off easily. A roof slope of at least 2 to 12 is generally required. Snow mitigation devices like icebreakers and gutters for rainwater are also available to help protect the immediate area around the building. Security can also be a concern with fabric buildings, as with any building. While fabric is a very tough material, you can cut a hole through it with a knife. This level of risk should be measured against the necessary security that will be needed to protect the building. Security systems, motion detectors, and floodlights are effective at reporting and preventing potential break-ins. In addition to fenced-in compounds, many building owners also choose steel, concrete, or brick veneer walls on a fabric structure as an additional security measure. Like in many industries, there are diverse quality standards among fabric structure manufacturers. Standard quality indicators like ISO 9001 certification are one way of judging the quality of a fabric building manufacturer. The building manufacturer should be able to explain every step of their process and all the materials used. Evaluating the materials, manufacturing, and installation experience are several more ways to determine if you are purchasing the highest quality building. Coated PVC fabric is one of the best known architectural fabrics. Coated PVC fabric is made of a woven inner layer called scrim. The scrim is the basis of the fabric and provides the strength. Both sides of the scrim are protected by a primer, a protective coating, and a top coat lacquer. The primary layer is designed to inhibit bacteria, mold, and UV rays, as well as enhance the bond coating. The top coat helps prevent UV rays from penetrating the inner layers provides a waterproof barrier and provides protection to the scrim. The final layer of the fabric is a lacquer. The clear lacquer has two primary roles, to keep plasticizers within the PVC from coming out and to provide a smooth, self-cleaning surface. Many PVC fabrics are also flame retardant in accordance with NFPA 701 and California Fire Marshal requirements. The picture shows Exotech, which is a PVC fabric exclusive to Legacy. PVC is not the only architectural fabric available on the market. PE, ETFE, 
Laminated PVC and other materials are also available. The types of fabric vary in light transmittance, strength and weight, as well as other properties. An experienced consultant will help you find the best fabric for your application. Standard fabric tests include the grab tensile, strength tensile, tongue tear, and weathering tests. The manufacturer should have the results of these tests readily available for each of the fabrics you're considering. But the quality of the fabric is only one piece of the puzzle. How the fabric is treated during the manufacturing and installation is equally important. Now it's time to talk about fabric component manufacturing. First, panel manufacturing is the process of taking fabric from the manufacturer's roll, cutting it, and preparing it for attachment to the frame. Each roll of fabric should be inspected as soon as it arrives from the manufacturer. Fabric is checked for any visible imperfections or discoloration. After the, visible inspe the visual inspection, the standard fabric test should be completed. Once the fabric has passed all quality inspections, panel manufacturing can begin. Panels must be measured to tight tolerances that account for the precise amount of stretch given in a, present in a given fabric. Precision manufacturing is especially important when using individual fabric panels. These tight dimensions force a pretension in the panel once it is placed. This tension keeps the fabric taut, which resists movement and prevents the fabric from rubbing against any steel members below it. Once the panels are cut and aligned, individual pieces of fabric are welded together using hot air, wedge, or RF welding systems. The strength of the fabric weld should be as great or greater than the strength of the fabric itself. Once the fabric panels are manufactured, they can be rolled and packed for shipping to the building location. Where the fabric panels are manufactured, manufactured is important too. Fabric panels will perform best if the manufacturing facility is kept with proper temperature and humidity parameters to ensure the optimal weld strength. Each panel should also be labeled with the location on the building before it is shipped. This will help save time and confusion on the job site. If you don't have the opportunity to tour the factory floor, there are a few ways to verify the quality of the fabric panel manufacturing. Quality certifications are good indicators that the manufacturer has an established and consistent process for manufacturing the panels. Quality of installation is another key difference between fabric installers. Very few companies install fabric on rigid steel frames that we normally associate with metal building companies. Installing fabric buildings is a specialized process, best performed by trained crews. This is an advantage of vertically integrated companies like Legacy who use in-house crews for manufacturing and installation. In Legacy's and patented attachment system, each fabric panel, typically 20 feet wide, is secured to the frame using a Keter attachment system. In this system, a Keter rail slides horizontally on the top flange of the frame, eliminating the need to detach or flex frames during the fabric installation process. The extrusion is attached to the frame with half-inch bolts, eliminating the challenges of hard fastening with self-drilling fasteners while allowing for the very important horizontal tensioning after the frame is fully secured into place. The roof panels are attached together as shown in the diagram to create a waterproof, sealed exterior membrane. The system also uses horizontal mechanical tension to stretch the fabric to the recommended level, keeping it taut and preventing any friction for the life of the building. This system provides regular support and tension for the fabric, both vertically and horizontally, which is critical to ensure a wrinkle-free finish and a long fabric life. Another significant advantage of this system is the increased safety during construction. Frames are completely braced and all the cross cables are installed and tensioned prior to installing the fabric onto the building. The frames do not need to be flexed or bent as shown in the bottom rendering in order to allow for the fabric to be properly installed. Safety is always first during construction, a vital consideration on all building sites. So why aren't fabric buildings as widely used as engineered metal buildings? There are a few reasons. Pre-engineered metal buildings have been around for a longer period of time. Nearly 25 years ago, fabric buildings were mostly used as tents. The development of fabric building technology beyond tents has led to widespread use. While fabric buildings have been used for decades in locations around the world, 
The rigid frame technology that allows for pre-engineered fabric structures was introduced by Legacy Building Solutions in 2010. Fabric structures are not ideal for flat roof buildings, though even steel buildings need a minimal slope to shed water. But fabric buildings are becoming more widely used in industries as diverse as aviation, bulk storage, riding arenas, manufacturing, and mining. I'll now turn it over to Nathan to share some case studies. Thanks, Dwayne. These fabric buildings for DHL Express use jack beams to create wider sidewall openings that allow a large equipment to pass between the structures. The buildings are part of DHL Express's hub expansion in Cincinnati Northern Kentucky International Airport and provide a place for DHL staff to store shipping containers while keeping them protected from the elements. Both side-by-side -side buildings measured 205 feet wide by 580 feet long. One side wall is enclosed while the remaining walls are left open for easy access in and out of the building. The fabric colors were chosen to match DHL Express's branding, while the frames have, been, have a white primer finish. Legacy crews installed these buildings in a tight timeline designed to keep DHL operations running smoothly throughout the entire construction pro process. This is a bottom ash dewatering facility in North Dakota. It measures 220 feet wide by 240 feet long and uses a hot dip galvanized steel frame. The ventilation systems in this building, including exhaust fans and ridge vents, are designed to produce six air turns per hour. In the picture, you can see the interior equipment, most of which is already in place during the installation process. Legacy also supplied lighting and doors for the project. This building was designed for Trapeze School of New York and allows them to offer trapeze, trampoline, and acrobatic classes in any conditions. The gambrel roof shape allows students to fly to the top of the building without obstructions or safety concerns. The trapeze rig and netting are incorporated into the building loads. It is finished with R30 insulation and a polyethylene fabric liner on the inside, as well as gutters and downspouts on the outside. As an assembly facility for SolarShip, a new type of aircraft that runs completely on solar power, the size and shape of the aircraft required straight uh, sidewalls and specialized doors, which made many traditional hangar buildings prohibitively expensive. Legacy met SolarShip's tight budget and timeline requirements. Another unique feature of the building is the rooftop solar panels, which allowed the building to be completely off-grid while supplying power to the door LED lighting, and charging stations for solar ships themselves. The fabric is, a, is flame retardant to comply with NFPA 701. And that's it. Today we covered the advantages of pre-engineered metal and fabric structures. We compared metal and fabric structures to each other and discussed the benefits of each of them for you. You also learned about architectural features available for rigid frame fabric structures and some of the examples of fabric buildings in used. And with that, I'll turn it over to our moderator for the question and answer session. Great, thank you very much. Well, we have a lot of questions here to get to. Um, so, but while we're doing that, please uh, feel free to continue to submit questions using the Ask a Question box on the left side of your webcast dashboard. So first question, um, how do you address insulated roofs? So I'll answer that question, Bob. Um, with insulated roofs, we actually use um, metal building insulation, which is, uh, which is situated in between the frames. We have a thermal bridge or barrier that uh, goes onto the frame to, to eliminate that. And then on the inside of that, and this is what's really unique and cool, we actually apply a fabric liner system. And that liner, it creates a smooth, clean finish on the inside of the building. It also acts as the vapor barrier for the structure, and it uh, provides an incredibly airtight and well-insulated structure. Okay, next question. Does a fabric building need to meet the codes? The answer to that is yes. Uh, fabric <laughs> buildings <laughs> need to meet all codes. I'll maybe let Dwayne talk a little bit more ab about that as it relates to codes. Dwayne? Sure. Our, our, uh, the, the software that we use primarily is, is for Canada and U.S., so in Canada using the National Building Code, um, the current version, uh, version switching from 2010 to 2015, and 
and then our US, all our US projects are all reference the IEBC code, and of course we're using ASC 710 and now switching to 16. So um, yeah, every every structure goes through that same process. We use the same loads, apply them to our building just like any regular metal building would as well. So yes. So can fabric structures be permanent buildings to resist 110 mile per hour wind speeds? So again, the answer is yes. Um, almost all of the buildings that Legacy built are uh, are designed and, and built as permanent buildings. And uh, as, as Dwayne mentioned, we use uh, customized engineering software, which allows us to design to any specific site. And uh, and so we've we've built buildings uh, which uh, which go into the Florida zones, which have extremely high wind loads. Or alternatively, we've put buildings in the mountains of Chile which had uh, 220 pound per square foot snow loads. And so, uh, you know, they're extremely flexible in terms of uh, being able to design to meet that, that local load, specifically when it's a rigid frame uh, structure that allows us to optimize that structure for the site. So what are the R ratings for fabric shelters and also fire ratings? So fabric buildings, uh, the fabric itself is a non-conductive material, thermally non-conductive, but that doesn't really have an R rating. And so the R rating is uh, predicated on the insulation that is put inside the building. So we'll, uh, we'll often put in R30. That's our standard uh, building insulation that, uh, that we install in there. But uh, based on uh, customer requirements or individual codes, we can, we can go significantly higher than that. So with insulated fabric, do you lose the light diffusion? That is correct. Uh, as soon as you put the insulation in, it basically blocks out the light. Uh, and so that's, that eliminates one of the uh, benefits of fabric buildings is, is the natural light coming inside. But obviously, uh, if you want to have an insulated building, then, then uh, you need to do that. Another question about fire. Does the fabric meet NFPA 701 fire propagation performance criteria? So not all fabric does. Uh, all of the fabrics that uh, we use here at Legacy meet NFPA 701, uh, S109 in Canada. Uh, they meet California Fire Marshal ratings, uh, and so all of the uh, all of their rating requirements for as per the building code. Uh, you know, we can definitely supply fabric with or fabric that meets those requirements. Okay, another question. Does the fabric add any rigidity to the structure that is counted on in the design? Dwayne, I'm going to let you answer that question. Sure. Um, I think that was touched on uh, when Sarah was talking. Um, the, nat the naturally, the fabric will act as a redundant brace. So I, I, I obviously, it's pulling on both sides of that, um, the, the top flange of the beam. So it, it is there. But as far as the design process, when we're running it through, we have our purlins can be anywhere from eight and a half to, to 12 foot on center. That is our lateral unbraced length for inside and outside flange that we're designing around. So, um, so while we're relying completely on the purlins, we do have that redundant brace that we do not rely on. So no, we do not count on it. Can Legacy design a foundation? Dwayne, you want to answer that one again? Sure, yeah, um, I, I'd say, uh, it changes all the time, but it seems like about 50% of the buildings we we uh, do, they were, they would like to have us do the foundation as well. So, we we've done foundations up into Canada and all you know all, all through the U.S. Um, I've been a structural engineer for 30 plus years, so I, I'm obviously I was I've been doing foundation design a long time as well, even before I did fabric building. So, it's nothing we're afraid of. Um, uh, we 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 do it every day, but uh, yeah, about 50% of the buildings I'd say that we do, we actually do the foundation as well. So, how long does the fabric panel last compared with the steel panel option? <laughs> that now that's an interesting question, um, and it and it really depends on the application or the situation that is going in. Uh, as we mentioned in the uh, presentation, uh, one of the unique features of, of fabric is that it is non-corrosive or it does not corrode. And so, um, you know, the fabric generally that we use has a 25-year warranty, and so we expect it's, it to last 25 to 30 years. 
Um, when you go into a corrosive situation, you're going to get that same 25 to 30 years. However, you know, as compared to a metal panel, you might get 5 to 8 to 10 years. I was recently at a facility that uh, had originally built a metal building. It was a compost facility in, in Tennessee. And uh, eight years after, they actually replaced it with a fabric building because uh, of significant corrosion and, and basically there wasn't much left of the building. And so uh, fabric can provide some significant advantages in terms of longevity and life uh, of, of the structure as a whole. In terms of magnitude, is there any significant difference between the wind load of a fabric building and a comparable metal building? Dwayne, you want to answer that again? Uh, I'm trying to understand the question. That there's no difference on how the wind affects the building as far as how it's applied to the building. We're going to have the same factors that are generated by ASC 7. Um, but as far as uh, if you're talking about how the, the diaphragm action of a steel building is different than the the fabric building because we, we have no diaphragm at the top. You know, we're relying on the purlins and, and that, that system and our cables to take the load out. So, um, so if I understand the question correctly, uh, that yes, they are up, the wind is applied the same way, whether it's longitudinal or parallel winds or you know, coefficients for secondary members, things like that. That's all the same. So can a legacy frame be recovered at the end of the lifespan, assuming the frames are still acceptable? And is this cost effective? Yes, that is uh, absolutely something that can be done. Uh, the unique feature is, uh, it, you know, any any building or facility needs to have maintenance over the course of of 20 or 30 or 40 years. And so, the great part about a fabric structure is is you can very simply pull fabric into the new track or the tra tracks and channels that allow it to go into. And uh, essentially, you have a brand new looking building uh, almost overnight. And so it's cost effective, it's quick, and it looks great. Are there technical documents available for use by engineers to design? Dwayne, I'll let you answer that uh, again. Well, I mean, uh, as I, okay, um, it, it is just a, a normal design process that you would come toward any building. Um, obviously, uh, you're, you're Site specific, you're getting your loads, your snow loads, your wind loads, your seismic, all those types of things. Um, the difference would be, be that again, if if you're a normal metal building designer, you're not going to have that diaphragm. You're not going to have all those purlins up on your top flange. We our purlins actually on our bottom flange, which the flange brace is going up to the top flange. So um, the design procedure, you know, the rigid frame design essentially is straightforward. It's the same. Um, but but there are there are little differences as far as the secondary members that you'd have to be aware of. So um, other than that, no, they're it's just like any other building, really. So what types of foundations are typically used for these buildings? Dwayne, why don't you answer well, that again? Yeah, well, you know, the, I say the most common, of course, are uh, um, just the regular pier and and spread footing foundations. Uh, we we also have pile foundations, if people want driven pile foundations, sometimes we rely on some subcontractors to do that, guys that have guys and gals that have expertise in that area. Um, we do, of course, thickened slab foundations. Um, we, we've done even some, well, I'm trying to think of, we, we have done some waste block foundations on real small temporary structures where uh, they can move the foundation and the building at the same time. So we've had, we've had a variety of different foundations that you can use um, just compared to any other metal building. In situations with poor soil conditions, uh, utilizing the designing screw pile foundations are, are also mm -hmm. very effective of, of being able to find your way through that poor soil and into, into better bearing uh, places in the earth. So will Legacy furnish all the loading from which the, a structural engineer can design the foundations? Absolutely. I mean, uh, again. Yeah, the, the the reaction. We have a reactions page that goes out with our, not only with our calculations, but with our building drawings, and it'll it gives not only the worst load combination. So you'll see your worst horizontal, your worst vertical downward, your worst worst vertical uplift, and corresponding horizontals or verticals that go with those. But below all that, you'll have your additional loads. Like, what is the load just because of dead load? What is the load just because of collateral or snow or live 
all of those load parallel to ridge. They're all there, so you can create any combination you want, even though our program has already combined it, probably 100 plus load combinations already. But if you want to generate another load combination, you know, you can have at it because it's all right there on most sets of their calcs and drawings. So can damaged, uh, cut or torn fabric be easily repaired? Uh, yes, it can be. Um, the, uh, as you noticed during the presentation, the fabric is actually welded inside the manufacturing plant. And the uh, cool part about that is uh, it can also be welded on site. And so there's a simple little weld tool that uh, can allow either us or we can train train our clients how to do you know basic uh, basic repairs on the fabric on site and so it's it's extremely flexible and and if you if you have some damage to it because you drove a forklift into it or something like that it's it's relatively easy to repair so what uh, this question is one of the main concerns about fabric structures is sagging and water accumulation on, on the roof. Have you had any issue in that regard, and what have you done to prevent that? So Dwayne mentioned it in in his part of the presentation. One of the uh, one of the items with fabric structures is uh, ensuring that there is a roof slope on it. And so we generally do not design a fabric structure with less than a 212 roof slope to allow for to allow for uh, shedding of water and, and snow and, and things like that. The, the proper attachment system and, and tensioning of the fabric is also another critical tool. And, and Legacy's patented fabric attachment system allows us to have proper tension both horizontally and vertically on that, on that panel. And it really um, minimizes a lot of the impacts of sagging and so it's really looking at the design of the structure and accounting for all features of that design including the fabric does, which does have some stretch into how it interacts with with uh, the site conditions you know i.e. snow or, or, or rain. So how do fabric structures compare to others in terms of projectiles that are common with hurricanes and tornadoes? Uh, very good question. Uh, we are recently just completing our uh, Miami-Dade hurricane testing, and uh, I was personally involved in that testing and and uh, walked through or went through a, a process in in terms of firing two by fours and and various uh, other things that could be flying at the building in a in a uh, in a hurricane. The fabric is extremely tough, um, and uh, generally speaking, is going to survive probably equally as well as a metal building as it relates to flying objects coming at it. Okay, I want to go with just another question or two. Um, what is the guaranteed life of the fabric by legacy for typical use, and how does this change uh, to the chemical exposure? If there's chemical so exposure. our fabrics, we have two primary fabrics. Uh, one carries a 20-year warranty, and the other carries a 25-year warranty. And, uh, and both are, are high-performing uh, products. And with regards to chemical exposure, generally speaking, the fabrics are inert. But if you had a specific chemical that, uh, that uh, you were applying, we would want to actually uh, check it to see if there was any potential reaction to the, to the fabric. And so that, that gets a little bit specific to the, to the chemical that's being uh, stored or, or warehoused inside the building. And so, uh, we would want to check that individually. And for a last question today, um, do you know of an, in, an installation in which the area of insulation is limited to a majority but not all of the area to allow some natural light diffusion? Uh, we actually have done that in our own manufacturing plant. Uh, we have a skylight in the middle of it. Um, I would re I would generally recommend that this only occurs in climate in warmer climates because it has some potential frosting issues or or things like that that could happen. And, um, so generally speaking, we don't do that, but uh, we look at it on a on a project by project basis um, to specifically figure out uh, how we might accomplish that. Okay, great. Well, that's all the time we have for questions today. Um, answers to all of the questions that were submitted today, um, even those we haven't gotten, had time to answer, will be available online within a few days at csengineermag.com 
slash continuing education. So please check there for further discussion about today's topic. As we finish up, uh, please download your certificate of completion from the event resources section on the left side of the dashboard. After downloading the certificate, enter your name in it and print and save a copy of the PDF. Note that the certificate will be available only during the remainder of this webcast and a hard copy will not be mailed or emailed to you. If you missed our note at the beginning and you are watching the live webcast with a group on one red person's computer, please download the multiple viewer registration form and complete it submit the form to receive credit. We need this information in case you're audited and we are contacted to verify this continuing education activity. Additionally, this webcast has been recorded and will be archived on csengineermag.com slash continuing education. For viewers of archived webcasts, click on the quiz button on the event on the CS Engineer Mag website to take a quiz on the presentation. Archive viewers must pass the quiz in order to download a certificate of completion. As we conclude, you should see a webcast evaluation survey. We appreciate your feedback, which helps WAG Group and sponsors, such as Legacy Building Solutions, plan future webcasts. So thank you to all our speakers and to everyone who joined us. This ends today's webcast.